Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. I, I had a great time in Alaska. I just want to say it was so inspirational, beautiful country. If you haven't seen it, you need to go and see Alaska and experience it because there's so many things to see, so many things to do and opportunities out there. Um, I'm excited for you to join me today. Um, very excited because we're using our cutie frame and we're going to sew edge to edge all the way down the quilt. Well, we won't make it all the way through the quilt, but I'm going to show you how to do it and then let you experience with me. So uh, I've got a lot to talk about today. So let's jump in and introduce you to the automation and my tablet. And I talked to you last time about the setup on the QD frame and quilting. Um, it's awesome. So just make sure that you understand that the automation doesn't work with every sewing machine out there. And there is a good um, compatibility chart online at graceframe.com. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to call and ask our account executives if your machine is compatible. And we, um, we also, you can also email me, okay? It's Carla with a K. K-A-R-L-A at graceframe.com. And just make sure that if you have any questions, man, I'm here for you. And I really want to help you and make this automation and free motion quilting, everything quilting, be a wonderful experience for you. And it all is a learning curve. So don't be frustrated that you don't understand. And don't jump right in and start quilting on a beautiful quilt, okay? Just put a little test piece on and and learn the functions um, use it in simulation mode and marie said i needed to do a whole segment using simulation mode so you guys could um, see how i use it um, in that mode so we'll go to my office one day and experience it and it i'll show you my setup um, so very excited about this today so I have my little baby quilt here. It's not very big. And the number one thing that I did was I measured my quilt top so that I knew what size measurements I would put into the automation. So um, I have those written down. It's actually 40 by 40. That's the exact size. But because we're sewing off from edge to edge, I want it to sew off just a little bit. Um, and so what I'm going to do is add an inch. So I'm going to make it 41 by 41, top and bottom. It's a little square quilt. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to load up my automation. And it's asking if I want, I need to put my sewing machine in the center so that it can engage. And I'm going to tap on OK. <laughs> Now, with the domestic machines, the presser foot is this foot right here. That's called the presser foot. It has a presser foot gauge in it or, you know, so you can make it press harder on the fabric or loosen it for free motion quilting. So if you have one of those gauges, loosen it for free motion quilting so that the foot's not pushing down so hard and you get wrinkles. Um, also, you'll need your quilting foot attached to it, um, but that presser foot really makes a difference, especially with the Juki machines that I'm using. They kind of tend to have a, a, a harder press on them, so I, you want to loosen that. Okay, so we're in the automation, and just like last time, I want to encourage you to explore the automation. Um, go up here to your help files. So once you're done using your domestic machine and you want to upgrade to a longer arm machine, don't throw any of your parts or put the parts where you can't find them for the automation because everything you need for your, your next machine, your next upgrade for the QNIC machines is in with the automation, the brackets that you'll need to attach. So it makes that upgrading very, very easy. You can use the same automation with a domestic machine, a home domestic machine that you can with the Cunic machine. Um, so you don't have to buy new software just to have it work with that and new hardware. Now, if you were using a machine and we've currently added, yes, and it's way, way, way old, 
you will need to purchase an upgrade because the automation has changed um, in its, to its current form. And so if you have an old, old, old automation with an LCD screen and they're tapping on it and you want to get current, which I encourage you to do, then that is an upgrade. And so you'll have to purchase the parts necessary to upgrade because it has changed. Okay. So now we're in the automation and because we're sewing an edge to edge quilt, we're going to tap on our pantograph. The first thing that we want to do is set our safe area. And remember, our safe area is not this quilting area. It's the area that um, we want to make it large enough so that we can quilt. So I'm going to move it off to the side and up off my quilt as far as I can. And I'm going to tap on my top left. And then I'm going to, and I've tacked down my quilt already. So just know that I did that step because I didn't want to take a lot of time and tack it down. So it's already tacked down, but that's really important. You need to tack down your quilt. Now I want to move all the way to the, to the right corner and down as far as I can till it hits. Okay. And then I'm going to tap on my screen that says bottom right. Okay. So right here, I'm going to move this back down here by me. Okay, so right here, these numbers, my total width and my total height is um, my quilting or uh, my safe area. Okay, so it's not going to allow me to, to quilt a, a design that's going to be larger in size than six inches because that's all the further that my sweet little machine here can reach or can sew. All right, but I can change my width. Now, notice right here in the panto mode, we have different modes to use. We have power panto, and I'm going to show you what each of the modes look like with the designs so that you can see what they do on screen. So let's select power panto, and that's the one I'm going to use. And so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to select my pattern. And I want to use, uh, let's do something kind of fun. Uh, let's go in here and my badge. So you can see I have a lot of designs. Let's see what this little bouncing hearts is and what it looks like. Okay. Notice I haven't put the measurements for my quilt in yet, but it's a cute little design. And when it pulled it in, in Power Panto, it's going to take... These measurements here, right here, the 29 and the 6 inch height, and calculate how much of the pattern it can fit, will fit into this area. Okay, so now I want to change, and I want to put 41 by 41. That's my quilt. Notice how it changed it. It moved the design to 2 inches in height. So that's how much. Now I can adjust my design because I don't want it that small. I think it'll look terrible. So this is where you get to play and decide what you like or what size you want. So let us let me tap on my little eyeglass thing to enlarge my screen. Just enlarge it here so I can see what it looks like. Okay. So I just enlarged the design, okay, so that I could get a little, so you could see it. I don't know if you guys can see it on. Oh, good, you can. Okay, so now we can play with it. And I want to make the design larger in size. So on my sizing, I want to tap on my plus and just see how it's sizing it larger in increments. So it's just going to keep sizing it. And I want to kind of go up to around four inches. 4.5 and see how much prettier it is. Now, the denser it sews, the more compact it is going to be on your quilt. Um, and you can decide what you like. Okay, so I like that, but now we can play with the spacing. And you can play with the spacing vertically or horizontally. And we just want to tap on the vertical because we want to pull it apart, especially if you're quilting on the hoop frame. It just kind of gives you that little extra that you need as you're adjusting, moving side to side, up and down. So you can just tap and space it just a little bit more. And that's what it looks like using um, the power panto mode. 
Now you can flip it, but I don't suggest that because the flipping doesn't work for every design. Um, this is already made to sew from edge to edge. Now, if you had a design that was just very directional and very um, horizontal all the way across, you could flip it. You could make one up, one down. So there's lots of different ways. Just play with the flips and see what it does. And then and just play with it before you start quilting because there's nothing more frustrating to get into it and see all these little clippings where you've broken the design. All right. So every time you flip it, you're breaking the connections from one design section to the next. So be very careful with what you play with. Okay. So now that is Power Panto. Let's go and try EZ and see what it looks like. So with EZ, it's keeping my same size, my total width and total height of my quilt. But I want my, um, let's go select my pattern. And let's select this right here, the same one, so you can see what it does. Okay. So I want to decide what size I want it. So I want it to be 4.5 inches in my pattern height. And now it's going to calculate how many using that 4.5. So it's not exactly 4.5. It's calculated as 4.56. So that's how many it's going to fit across. So it's deciding how many designs across your quilt using this measurement and how many rows down. So you don't get to decide. It's going to decide for you. Um, and easy is just kind of a fun way to make sure that you're getting the size or the size of your pattern, your design that you want and calculate it. So um, Janet George, she loves the easy mode and all the ways that she can quilt. And she's very good with the easy mode. Um, Paula is asking, maybe I could, um, I can have a small lesson on importing designs. Good, I will do that one day um, with the different, file types. Um, yeah, we'll go through that one day as well. Um, and, and if you want to email me, I'll send you my little guide to importing patterns because it takes you step by step on how to do it. Okay. So good question, Paula. And we will go through that as well because it's really fun to go and purchase patterns. It's almost as fun as she is, but not quite. Okay. So that is the easy mode and how it works. So the easy mode, just to again reiterate, it is taking the pattern height, that's the design, the pattern height, and adjusting the rows and the designs across. All right, so we've got one more, and it's called basic mode. And we're going to use the same design, but with basic, you get total control. Sorry. I didn't mean to do that. You get total control of how many designs across and how many rows down when you're making your calculations. So you can decide. Now, remember, if we are deciding how many across and how many rows down, we want to make sure that it is less than six inches because that was um, the height our machine could reach. So we just need to make sure that, and it's not the pattern width that you need to worry about, it's the height, all right? So we need to start adding rows to take care of that height. And still, see, it's still 8.2, it's not going to reach. So I still have to add more rows, but see, it's getting smaller, the more rows I add. So it, that would be fine as well. And I could add more patterns going across, make it more even, but here's what it looks like. Now you can stagger the designs and again, flip them and you can play with it to make it look like how you want it. But be again, very careful with what you do to the pattern of the design, because you, again, you could um, break that connection and then you'll have a little trim line. So notice that, I kind of have a spacing issue right here, but I can size it and make it larger so it's fitting closer together. And now I sized it a little bit too much because my steps, it was a medium. 
So change your steps. And this is where you'll get to understand how they work by just playing around with the buttons and using them and seeing what they do. And, and that will inform you and you will become much more, much better at quilting and understanding how the automation works. Okay, so let's go back to Power Pencil because that's the one I'm going to use today. And hi, Jared from So Right. How are you? Welcome. And now I'm just going to change it back to Power Pencil. All right, so now I'm back in. I have my sizes and everything. I'm just going to select my design. And notice it takes the design out and kind of resets it. So I get to pick my design. So I'm just going to go with my little bouncing hearts. And I did purchase that from Anne Bright. So if you really like this design, yeah, go to Anne Bright. And notice now uh, how dense it is. I don't want it to sew two inches. So I'm going to increase it. Just keep tapping on it. And I'm going to get it right here. And let's go one more. Almost five inches. I think that'll be okay. And I'm just going to get you started on this. So the automation using the hoop frame for edge to edge and down your quilt, it actually does all the work for you. It tells you where to make your marks, which are very important for you to mark, okay? And don't take off. And then it helps you move all the way down. So it does all the work for you. Um, don't be intimidated by it. Just jump in and try it. Okay. And Brenda, she says, if I have a Cunic 15 on a hoop frame, can I do two rows at one time and tie before I move the quilt over? It depends on the design that you're quilting, okay? On the hoop frames, they have this, um, this take-up pole, this pole, not this take-up pole, the front pole that extends out so that you can have a larger quilting area. Now, if the beginnings, you can only quilt um, two rows at one time. So when I am making my design, it's going to break it up into zones, or that's sections, so you can quilt it. So as I come over here and I tap on sewing zones, it's going to do the work for you, and it um, is going to decide when and where you're going to roll your quilt. So don't you worry about it. Now, if you have the beginnings, you can only do two, um, quilt two rows, and then you have to readjust it. But you don't have to readjust it if you have the pro version, because you're putting in the measurements for your whole quilt, to go all the way down and all the way across. And it's going to tell you when you should roll, when you should move, and what you should do. So let's get started. Okay. And it says the home, zone height was adjusted to fit in the design. You say, okay. And then it asks you a really important question. It asks you if you want to save your pattern. Yes, because I'm not going to finish this on this frame here because we need it for the fall festival. So I'm going to have to take it off. Um, and so I'm going to make my marks and use my save to put it back on the other frame or put it back on after and finish the quilt. So yes, you want to save it. And we're going to say yes. And you can tell I've already saved one, but we're going to call this Tuesday 2. So I'm going to tap right here. So if you tap on this little mark right here, your little keyboard will come up, and it's Tuesday. And I want my number 2. And then I want to hit Enter, tap on Enter right there. And notice that when I tapped on Enter, how the name of my design came down here into the file name field, and now I can tap on save. And now it's saved. Okay, notice, okay, right here, it's already broken my design up on the hoop frame. So it does all the calculations for you, okay? So it's going to sew as a line across here, and sew this first little section, and then, um, and then it's going to tell me to mark and shift my quilt and finish across the top, and then we're going to go down. So let's jump in. I hope everything works really good for us. And so what I'm going to do is come over here, and I have already marked my A, okay? 
I want it right there. So you're going to make your mark, okay, in this world, um, but on this quilt. So you'll make a mark, and I use a little sticker, okay? And I just did a, the needle down into it so that I had a little mark that I knew that if something happened, I could come back and get my um, first placement. So I want to put this down, and I'm going to tap on my screen, tap on A. Now I'm going to move across the top and just make a B mark right here. I'm going to do it right here um, so that I have another little mark. But if I wanted to, I could use another little sticker and have a B. Put my needle down in. And let's put my foot down and I'll make another little one. Okay, there's my mark. So I'm just gonna come right there and put my needle right over that little hole and tap on B. Okay, notice how it adjusted it because my quilt's not on exactly straight. That's what's so cool about this. It's going to adjust it as you're quilting. Um, you're going to move to that section and if it's not on exactly straight, it's going to adjust it on the screen. So it's gonna sew just right for you. and. I just think that's really cool. Nobody else has that. So anyway, so now I'm just going to come over here and hope that this doesn't take my sticker up, but it might. And oh, well, okay. <laughs> get, a, get a piece of tape or a sticker that's going to really stick because you'll want those to stick down, but it's not going to pull up your thread so that you can sew over it. And then you can take it off. You don't need a huge one. You just need something to write on. And I want to make sure that I write B here. So I wrote B, okay? And there's my little needle mark. So let's jump in and get started. I'm hoping it doesn't take that sticker off, but you never know. All right, so I put it right over there with my mark. And let's tap on. And I didn't do my C and D yet, okay? So those are optional. But I could come down here along this side here and just mark C and see what it does. Didn't do anything. So didn't really like me on that. So let's get sewn. Okay. So let's tap on sew. Oh, it says, ensure my needle is up. I'm going to say, okay. Now it's going to start. See where it's starting right there? And it just starts on it. <laughs> I don't want it to get caught on my little dangling threads. You hear that? I had a little close to to the, the thing, so I'm going to pull them out. Don't be scared with it. Any mistake that you make, make it on a, a quilt <laughs> that you're not really you know, put a lot of hard work on. That's why I say get to understand and know the automation. But it's just going to move over here, and then it's going to stop. And then I'm going to remark and pull my quilt down. And you're going to do that all the way across and all the way down your quilt. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we've done our first little zone, okay? And all you have to do, again, is mark. So now we're ready to shift it down and finish this top section. And then we're gonna come back and make our, our next little zone. So now we're going to start quilting zones two in just a minute. So what I need to do is cut my threads. It's really nice to have a thread cutter there, okay? But I could pull it forward and cut my threads and everything. Okay, so now I've cut my thread. And now we can tap on finish zone, okay? And now it's going to ask you some all important questions. So please read the screen as you're quilting. It says, have you completed sewing this zone? Yes, I have. 
Um, this includes pulling the bobbin thread and making any needed repairs. So this is the time to do it if you had some problems and you needed to repair. All right. If so, touch yes to advance to the next zone. And we're going to tap on yes. Make sure the needle's up and it's going to do it for me. So what it's going to do is this is where I'm going to mark. Okay. So instead of this mark right here, I am going to make another little mark. And I'm going to call this one 2A. Okay, I'm going to put that right there. And I am going to, let's see if I will do a single stitch for me. No. These jukies like the down position on the needles. So watch it, okay? Be careful with that as you're quilting. Okay, so I want to make sure that I write on this 2A, okay? And now we are going to, now that we've marked 2A, we want to move to the next mark right here. It's going to tell you when you're done making all your marks. Make sure the needle's up. Oh, I have another little one I need to mark. And this will be 3A. This will help me line up my next row of designs. So I want to put it underneath. That's what's nice about that presser foot is that you can just lift it up and do your little single stitch. And all right, and then we want to make sure that we do this 3A. Then we want to have it go to its next mark. And I'm going to say, yes, it's okay. But this is what you're going to do. I have all these little marks right in this area. I must have picked a little more complicated design, but I want to make sure that I write 3A here. Okay, so that's that mark. And then... I'll get another little sticker. Sometimes, Annette, you're going to have several little marks. Other times, no. But I don't want to cover. I want to get my threads up so I know that they're not getting caught all the way around. So, okay, there we go. 3A. I might have a nice little section of marks there we go okay now I'm going to put it down now I'm going to do my single stitch again all right and that is 4b okay so that one is 4B, and I want to go to my next mark. Okay kind of took a big old bobbin thread and notice I have one more over here to make mark and it's just down but now I can mark 3b so let me put this down and you think oh dear God, this is going to take so much time well it does but you want it to be done correctly and see, now I'm done. I'm done with all my marks. So I had my 2A, my 4B, and my 3A. And I think I marked, yeah, they're right under there. I'm going to just kind of take that off because my 2B, there, was kind of hidden. And this one is 3B. So we want to bring the needle back up. And 
Now we're done. So let me show you. Let's write three B. Okay. So now what it's going to do is we're going to tap on continue. And it says, ask me if all my zones are marked. And this is your chance to, if you don't think that you've got it correct to go back and remark them. Just make sure that they're correct and then just say yes. And now your machine's going to move. All right, I want to pull up the presser foot on this machine and say, okay. And now it's going to move to where you're going to. Move your quilt. So it's telling me that I need to move my 2A, which is this one right here, down over here under my foot, or as close as possible. Kind of interesting, huh? How it's having this quilt. But it knows what it's doing, so don't second guess it and think, oh my gosh, it's done. Because what it's done is it's broken up the pattern or the design into sections, and it knows what how to have you quilt it and where you're supposed to move. So now we can un take off. All our mess here. Okay. That's why I had him keep the chair here because I needed it. Okay. So Paula is asking, what happens to the thread and bobbin thread when you are moving it around, taking and uh, making single stitches? You just need to make sure it, it comes up and it moves with it. That's all there is to it. So when you're using your home domestic machine, just make sure that the needle is back up because they like their certain positions. So what we're doing is we're, we're kind of replacing um, the functions a little bit, okay? It's still going to sew and do what it wants to do because and unless you're connected internally, we're just connected through the foot pedal port. So it's only going to do certain things um, and move around. So those functions that we can deal with and use, we're going to use um, on our sewing machine. So that's what's cool about it. Now, on the Cunic machines, um, they, it's built in internally to work with them. So it's a little more intuitive. But for right now, for your home domestic machine, this is the way to go and get familiar with it. And then you'll be ready for that upgrade probably sooner than later. But but it's so much fun. I mean, it's so exciting to be able to quilt how you want to quilt. So I'm going to move my little 2A, okay, underneath the foot right here because it's not going anywhere. It's locked into place. So it's not going to move on you as you're taking everything off to move it. So we're just going to quilt this next little section. I'm just showing you the motions of it, and then I'm going to leave you to it to try it on your own. Now, on a rolling frame, you've seen us quilt using the rolling frame. It works differently. So when you're using the automation and either frame, there's a function or setting for a rolling frame because it works differently because um, you're rolling it up. Um, so, so Brenda's asking, are you going to do a video on a hoop with the 15? I have already done one with the 15 uh, on a hoop frame showing you how it works. Um, is it in the videos, Brian? So. Yeah, Bryant says it's on YouTube, it's in the videos, and I just quilted a small little quilt again, showing you how to move it and adjust it edge to edge um, using our hoop frame and our Kinique 15. So go and look for that, and if you can't find it, let me know, and I'll send you a link to it. Real easy, and maybe we can find it and put a link on so that you can grab it really quick. So anyway, so now I'm going to pull my quilt down so that my 2A right here, my little 2A is right here on my quilt. Interesting how it had me move it down, but I'm just going to put my clamps back. And notice it's probably not going to be as straight as possible, but, but you know what? 
you get it as close as you can. And then, then you're gonna make some adjustments on it. And that's kind of why I'm talking to you as I'm putting this on. Okay, there we go. So as I'm putting these on, and it does take a little time, but I enjoy the quilting process and I like, you know, the time it takes and just kind of sitting here working through the quilt. And, you know, as you're working on it, you'll get faster and faster and faster using it. with the quilting process, you'll just make it your own because we love it so much. We work with the tools that we have. So I like the handles, you notice how I put them up, just kind of holds my quilt up off the, the floor, which is really nice. So notice that I still, now see, I'm still far, far too far away. So, okay. Because when you put those clamps back on, and, and you're just going to have to make the adjustments. Now, as I'm working with the quilts and stuff, I get better. Okay, so now if you hold your hand like this, it kind of helps you as you're putting the clamps on to know that you're pretty close. Okay. See, and I don't even know how it's going to quilt. I'm kind of excited to see what it's going to do with the design as I'm quilting. So I know this is the most boring part. <laughs> Watching me make my adjustments and working on it. That's why I'm trying to talk to you. Keep your mind not focused on me doing this. <laughs> All right. We're pretty close. We're not exact, but we're pretty close. So I'm going to turn these around, do them right. And you know, it's a little faster when you've got a longer arm machine um, because you're quilting a larger area. So with your 15, Brenda, You'll, you'll cover more area a little quicker than you will just with the domestic machine. But notice, I just started out and, you know, it's because I put it on incorrectly. So watch what you're doing and don't get sidetracked. All right. Let me get this back on. And as you're working through your quilt across and down. Notice that this, this side is up higher. That's okay, I'm going to mark it. Okay, so I'm pretty close. So I'm just going to move my machine and say, okay, I have moved. And it says, have you moved um, the fabric? Touch okay after the fabric mark, um, after the fabric marker has been positioned under the needle and say, okay. So I'm going to put my foot right there. I'm gonna line up my needle with my two way and make my mark. And notice that it's going to move across this way. And now I'm just going to make my B mark, which it didn't have me mark, but the B mark is to position it. So as I make my B mark right here, right along the top, right next to my tunic. Notice what happens. See, that's how off my quilt is, but we're gonna quilt it. All right. So now I can just quilt the rest of my design and hopefully it's not going to take up my stickers. So I'll have to watch those, okay? So I'm gonna come over here because I have a feeling it's going to start right along here. And I'll pull my bottom thread up. Okay, so let's go. Let's just say so. 
And I hope it doesn't take my stickers up, but if it does, because my design was a little off. There we go. Oh, it wants me to nudge it. We're just going to say, okay, because this is my practice clip. Now, if it wasn't right on the marker where you had it, your 3A, then you could nudge it. But we're not going to. We're just going to tap on so, okay? Okay, because it's right on. And you can see my design was a little off because of the adjustments that I made. So it's going to show how you place it. We'll do one more marking and one more shifting. But really, that's the same process all the way down. And you'll get that little nudge factor. If it, your needle isn't right on your marking, then you can nudge it. Just give it a little minute. So we'll see what happens as we get to the end here. And quilting our next section. Okay, so let's bring our needle up and we can cut our thread. Oh, we have a thread cutter. Duh. Okay, so we cut our thread. All right, so now we're ready with that finish zone. And it asked me if I completed, and I want to say yes. All right, so now it's going to have me mark some more. And this time it's going to be a little bit bigger section. So we're going to do our markings, and we want to, this is 4A, hurry and mark it. All right, let's do four A. Okay, and I want to do my single stitch. I can just do it right here. No, well, let's do it here so it knows that we did it. All right, and we'll bring the needle back up. And now we want it to. Oh, that's all. We're we're done. That was the only mark that we needed to mark. So now we're going to tap on continue. Cool. And say yes. Okay, now my machine's going to move and tell me which marker I'm going to move under the foot. Okay. So now I'm moving 4A up. It has a mind of its own, but it knows what it's doing. So like I said, you think it shouldn't be sewing this way, but it knows what it's doing, so don't second guess it. So what I'm going to do is just move it so that my 4A, and that's 4B, so I want, no, this is 4B, this is 4A. So I'm just going to move it so that my 4A is underneath there. It won't be too much. And voila, that was pretty easy. And I really encourage you to, to quilt edge to edge. It is so much fun and there's so many different designs out there. So I'm gonna move it down and over just a little bit and we'll put the clamps back on because it doesn't have to be exact, but it needs to be close. I'm sorry if you're getting a little bored with Carla shifting her fabric. She's a little shifty today. And we'll lock all these into place. Make sure that you put your little um, elastic straps into place. Really important. You will find out, <laughs> you will find out the hard way because the 
the carriage will get caught up underneath. So make sure that you put them into place. Okay, so I'm going to put them back on, put them on correctly this time. And notice, it's not exactly straight, but it's going to work for me. All right. Oh, it came out, dang it. There we go. Just wasn't liking me right there. Okay. I've got one more strap, but it's right there on the end. Yeah, even with if you don't have the cutie frame and you have another frame. Um, so Paula is saying the fine quilting products, the bobbin thread when marking gets tangled on my 15 Pro. Okay, um, if it does, then your tail is a little too long. Um, so don't let it get tangled. Um, cut it a little shorter um, to begin with, um, and then it should be okay. Um, but we'll work on that, and I'll give you a few more tips. Uh, Marie and I love a little challenge, so I need to understand if you are, when you're pulling it, are you pulling it up and off, or are you leaving it connected? So there are some questions. So Paula, please email me. And let's work through this so that I can understand a little bit better your process. Um, when you email me a question, um, if you send me pictures so that I have a better understanding or your process of how you're cutting your thread or if you're cutting it um, really helps me understand better so that I can help you fix the problem or understand that maybe there is another problem somewhere that we're not catching. So just send me pictures and help me understand your process. So it would help if you'd sit down and write down your steps. So after you're done with that section, are you pulling it forward and then pushing it back to make a tail and then pulling your thread up and cutting it because that makes it a little shorter and you don't have as long a tail. So help me understand and then we'll work through the process with you. Okay, so now I have my machine and notice it's not right on, that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna say I'm close. I'm gonna put okay and say okay. Okay, so now we're gonna quilt this next little section and I'm just gonna pull it, put my foot down right here and make sure that it's right over there. And then I'm gonna tap on A. And now I'm gonna come over to 4B. Remember, we did 4B right here. All right, so I wanna to go to my little mark for my 4B right here. And I'm gonna tap right there. And notice it's out of my safe area. So I have to take this clamp off <laughs> and readjust it because it's down too far. Otherwise, it's not going to quilt correctly. And that's okay. You just work with what you have and move forward. So I'll have to, once I readjust my fabric, though, I'm going to have to come back over here and replace my 4A mark. So just know it's just barely out of the safe area. That's okay. That is just fine. Okay, let's see. Can I get it up far enough? I hope so. Let's clamp this down again. Just real quick, put my clamps on. Now, if I hadn't readjusted it, and let's see if I've got it, my 4B, and see if I got it out. I'm good. So I'm going to place my B first, still out of my safe area. Dang it. That's why I didn't clip on everything. <laughs> oh, well. I'm just going to have to unclamp everything and pull it up. That's okay. There we go gonna like that a little better and now that I've got this section up I'm going to pull up this one a little bit more 
right here. And then I'll just go and replace them all. Sorry, that's the tedious part of it. Now I know my design will be okay. And it's not gonna really sew past this point. So I'm okay with this one being up a little higher. And I'm not really worried that it's not on exactly straight because I've got my markings. So hopefully we're good to go. And maybe I wouldn't have encouraged me to make the design quite as large and I wouldn't have had, you know, to make all these adjustments. But I wanna make sure I have all my straps into place. So now I'm gonna come back over here and remark my B and make sure it's up on C. Now it's out of the safe area. So it was good. I planned on that happening, okay? Just so that you know. I wanted to make all these little errors so that you don't make them. And notice it's a little straighter now. So that was even better. So now I've done my A and my B. That's all I needed to place. It's not having me do any more. So let's put it down. Let's see where it's going to start. It's going to probably start somewhere around here. So I'll pull my thread up. Okay, and let's go for it. Let's sew. It's pretty fun. So email me, but go and try it on your own. You know, and if you don't have a domestic machine, you have automation, you just want to play with it. Oh, it's so much fun. What are you waiting for? Not waiting for me to finish the quote. So I want you guys to go and get it done. But remember to join us for our fall festival this week. We have some wonderful cells, some great classes. I'm really excited to show you some new techniques. So make sure that you join us for the fall festival. And I won't be seeing you next week because we're going to continue on with the fall festival. But the week after that, I have lots of great ideas and things for us to work on together. So thank you for joining me today. I'm just going to let it quilt. And I'll leave you to go and do your own quilting in your own home and the comfort of your own roof. So take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.